Once you have your ham radio license, it's decision time, and one of the most difficult decisions is choosing an HF radio. Do you go with a more modest price radio to start, or do you want to jump into the deep end and get one with all the bells and whistles? At Ham Radio Prep, we say, take a look at both. If you're looking for affordable entry-level radios to start setting up your shack with, we got you covered. Go and watch our top five HF radios to start your shack with video linked in the description below. In this video, we'll go where the budget is no object. Here are five crazy amazing radios you'll aspire to if you become a serious DX contester or only buy the best of the best. Can for any H, this is an HF Hi, I'm Jim, N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. Before we get started, just want to let you know these picks are our own. We have not been compensated for any of the radios we mention. In the video where we covered the starter HF radios, we maxed out spending around $1,500 on a loaded ICOM IC705 QRP radio. We'll start back in QRP land here with a radio that comes as parts if you feel like you want to assemble the components yourself. We're talking about the Elecraft KX3. Elecraft is known in the industry as one of the higher end makers of amateur radio transceivers. That's why they're one of the top choices of serious DXers. The KX3 shack in a pack comes with the parts to assemble your 160 to 6 meter QRP radio. Also included is a portable pan adapter for seeing your waterfall, a battery charger, some adapters and cables, and a carrying case. Now I've used the KX3 and I've seen it nicely handle SSB, CW, and digital. It has an internal voice recorder and a CW keyer. All this for $2,874.05 with assembly required. Add in another $40 if they put it together for you. One nice thing about this radio is the broad number of add-ons that Elecraft offers. That includes a CW paddle that mounts to the front of the rig and a portable amplifier if you want to pump this up to 100 watts output. Let's stay with Elecraft for our next pick, which is their top of the line desktop radio, the Elecraft K4D. A beautiful radio with plenty of front of the box controls, dual waterfalls showing on a seven inch touchscreen. That's a way of showing off their dual receiver functionality. The 100 watt K4D is currently about $5,800. Expandability is part of the benefit you get from choosing Elecraft and several other high-end radio systems we'll discuss. For instance, while the K4D is designed for HF, it was designed with the ability to include a transverter, so you can add two meters or other functionality. Elecraft also has a line of amplifiers, so easy integration of more power is another benefit. So let's take a look at the back to give you an idea of what a high-end radio provides for options. The K4D has HDMI video out. That's just in case that seven inch screen is not big enough for you. You can connect an external monitor to show your waterfall. Three HF antenna inputs are available and antenna four can work with your transverter. You can pass through a dedicated receive antenna as well. Want to calibrate your radio to stay right on frequency? A 10 megahertz referencing connection lets you provide it a calibration source. Just a few of the options you'll find on these high-end radios. I also like the fact it uses power pole connectors for power, which are becoming more and more popular. If you're planning to spend between five and $6,000, you may also want to consider the Yaesu FTDX101 MP Max. Up until now, we've been limited to a top power output of 100 watts, but the MP Max doubles that to a 200 watt power output. That comes with a special power supply and speaker unit, so there's no worries about matching power there. Like the Elecraft, this is part radio and part computer. It can be connected to your home network. That allows for remote operating with additional software and an external LAN unit. That means you can use your PC speaker and mic and operate from your desk at the office if that rear DX comes online. That'll cost you an additional $300 or so. Also, like the Elecraft, it sports a seven inch screen on the front. We also appreciate its many, many connections on the back for things like an amp, tuner, and external display. If you want to go full software-defined radio, the top of the line in ham radio is the Flex Signature series of units. 
you can get your first Flex, the 6400, for around $2,300. However, we're looking at top of the line here, so you'll want to consider choosing the Flex 6600. This receiver can tune four different bands or modes at once. So you fire up the radio, open up a window on your computer, and see where the DX is. So that's an important point to make. As a software-defined radio, you need computer hardware to make it work. There are no controls or screens on the front panel of this radio, just a power button. To run this radio, you need to connect the 6600 to a local area network and a decently powerful computer. If you prefer knobs and buttons, you do have options. Flex offers a device called the Maestro. This one is controlling the Flex radio in my shack at home. The Maestro control console is a front panel for your radio with an 8-inch screen and all the knobs you want. Connect that to Wi-Fi and you can use your radio from your back deck or easy chair or here in the studio. Latency on Wi-Fi is low enough to support doing CW with no lag. We haven't talked about what it might cost to get to the full legal limit of power, so let's add an amp to our 6600 option. Flex offers the Power Genius XL to take you to the full legal limit of power. That's an investment of $7,700 plus an additional 15 amp circuit in your shack to provide all the juice this amp will draw. Additional options for the 6600 include their onboard GPS disciplined oscillator that ensures your radio is right on frequency every time for an additional $750. You can also get handles or rack mounts for your flex. Now, full disclosure, I've been a flex user for years, first with a 6500 and now a U6700. I mostly operate with computer controls and the little jog wheel accessory they sell. I appreciate that all the connections are made on the back of the radio, so I can keep the front area looking clean. Now, I'm sorry to hear the Flex has stopped production on the 6700, which had eight independent receivers. If that interests you, Flex occasionally has refurbished units on sale via their website. So, a new Flex 6600 with Power Genius Amplifier would cost you around $12,300. But that's not the ultimate radio. Radio, radio, radio. I give you the ICOM IC7851 for $13,299.95. You get this 200 watt native output monster of a radio. I counted 17 knobs and more than 70 buttons on the front of the 7851, so the right setting is always at your fingertips. The design gives you the best of both worlds. The 7851 has both direct digital sampling and IC conversion with the local oscillator. Three digital signal processors are there to handle the load. Need a fast spectrum scope while hunting your DX? You can see a megahertz wide swath of spectrum at one pixel resolution on its big LCD screen or add an external monitor. That GPS option we talked about with the Allocraft and Flex, that's built in to the 7851. What's on the back? six antenna ports, four for receive transmit, and two for receive only. Now think about that. If you're mostly on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, you can have an antenna cut to each band and just switch in the radio. Of course it has USB audio connectivity and an ethernet port. With ICOM's remote software, you can be anywhere around the world on the internet and work DX from your shack. The ICOM IC7851 plugs directly into AC power, so just think of all the money you'll save on a power supply. Kidding. So who's the market for these high-end radios? Lots of serious DXers are buying these. Take a look at news of DXpeditions and see what they take with them. Many of them are setting up with a Flex or an Elecraft because of their quality receivers and consistent performance. For instance, the October 2023 W8S trip to Swains Island had both models on their journey. When should you consider radios on this list? Well, if you're investing in a long-term shack with multiple antennas, it's a good time to start thinking about it. Those with high DX and contesting ambitions will also probably be interested in shopping for these rigs. So, let's recap these five crazy extreme radios that may not be as crazy as you thought. For our QRP option, we picked the Elecraft KX3. It's designed for things like a paddle that mounts to the front is great, and it fits great in a backpack. Its big brother, the Elecraft K4D, and the Flex 6600 
are our picks at the 100 watt level. When you're ready to jump to 200 watts output, you have two radios to choose from. The Yaesu FTDX101 MP Max and the ICOM IC7851 will get you an edge in breaking a pileup full of folks running only at 100 watts. If you're really ready to bust a pileup, pair a Flex 6600 with a Power Genius XL amp and go full legal limit in the US of 1500 watts. If you're not quite ready to take out a second mortgage to pick up a radio, check out our companion video. It's called 5HF Radios to Start Your Shack With. I'm Jim, N4BFR, from your friends at Ham Radio Prep, saying 73 for now, and we hope to hear you on the air soon.